The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Tsuburaya Productions. Hello everyone, and welcome back to How We Would Fix. If you can tell by the clothes on our bodies, we are just... <laughs> We're recording this right after the Grand Caesar review. <laughs> yes, yes we are. Because in that show, I legitimately can't be bothered. Yeah. Um, this show I'm requires... Glad. This show requires a lot of fixing. Because, my God. It certainly does. The struggle bus parked and stayed throughout pretty much all it of it. It parked, stayed, broke down, got a boot put on it. They brought another one, it, it broke down right in front of it. Mm hmm. Okay. And then they were blown up for a film set. Let's start at the beginning. And when we come to the end, we will stop. Yes. I'm getting rid of Tenma. It's okay with me. <laughs> Just no re- complaints here. Replace him with another stronger, more sure of himself, not a stupid character. Oh, you mean like Mika? Yeah. <laughs> she is great. She should have been the main character. In all honesty, that probably would have made the show a lot better when it focused around her. Mm-hmm. When she kicked Tenma right in the side of his head and knocked him out immediately, I'm mm-hmm. sitting here like, that's how the rest of the show should have gone. Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Mika is the, now the main just character. kicks him in the side of the head and he's just in a coma. Yeah. The rest of the show is just a fever dream. Uh, that'd be great. Um, the brother... Yeah, this is what really happened. ...needs something to do. Mm-hmm. Because he basically just goes, Oh, nice son. Or professor. Yeah. A character whose sole, whose sole purpose is to say other characters' names. Or to like Ron. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much his whole character. And I'm just like... If they would have leaned more into like into their relationship, mm-hmm. okay, sure, why not? Would have been fine. Um, I'm. Sp- I think with the brother, if you used him more of as a, as an emotional anchor, mm-hmm. if you wanted to make Mika your main your main character, have him be the emotional support of the emotional anchor, something that would keep her grounded, something that she needs to protect, somebody who. You know, he wants to help, but he screws up, and she has to go save him. He can be your damsel in distress. That sort of thing. He is a much more... Or if you want to make make him more mature, have him be the one who can, like, you know, help her get through troubles on an emotional level, that sort of thing. It would be good to have, like, a brother-sister pair as the main two. I feel like that would be a good change of pace for this. And make Tenma the third. You can sort of have him... Sort of had the same personality, mm-hmm. but the fact that Mika's just going to keep checking him. Mm-hmm. Nine year every single time. This is stupid what you're doing. Stop it. You're going to get yourself killed. And then at the end, he dies. Mm. And nothing of value is lost. <laughs> um, I want to space out the introduction of the other tribes. At least a little bit. Okay. If only because I feel like the Earth tribe just comes in mm-hmm. and doesn't really do anything for a good while. Right. And the wind tribe coming over to the side of the fire one could also be done a little mm-hmm. bit better. Don't make it such a quick about face. Mm-hmm. Like, there has to be a couple episodes of actually building that trust because it doesn't happen. Okay. Speaking of tribes, this script does not know to handle as many characters as it has. It has about so 10 too I w- many. I would have one Grand Caesar per tribe. Have that have one person be the emissary of that tribe. That's actually have, I mean. have one be the champion. You could you could have two people representing each tribe, and you could have one be the champion, that's your Grand Caesar, and the other one be the the mentor. Mm-hmm. So get somebody who's older, like the professor. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that's something we're going to talk about when we come to Justariser. There's only three, and then a fourth one gets added later. Mm-hmm. So there's only four main characters. Mm. Good. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's like they wanted to make a Super Sentai, but they also wanted to make four Super Sentai and also a Common Rider, and yeah, it was a mess. Would we get rid of the mechs? Honestly, I would, um, I would say no. Some of the duty to be redesigned. Um, and also that final form that has got to go. So that that is trash. Sashay away. Sashay. Shantae. No, just Sashay. Mm. <laughs> I th- I, th- I think the, I think the mechs you could keep. Yeah, because I actually like like the whole. But f- use them sparingly. Yes, they are not needed always, especially when they end up getting like those airplanes later on mm-hmm. in the uh, third arc where mm-hmm. they can just you know shoot the thing, sort of like uh, Ultraman does. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, the mechs aren't needed every episode. Not everything needs to grow. I mean, I understand them like sending down something big to try and mm-hmm. actually destroy them. But yeah, it's it's not needed. The combination is not always needed. Like I said, that first arc when Dorcris first comes out mm-hmm. and there's stormtroopers all over the earth truck. I mean, <laughs> the fire truck. <laughs> Here's what I would do with the mechs. Save them until the last like 10 or so episodes. Make them more special. Make them more special, and that's when... Because one of the things I felt that the show abandoned too quickly was the whole evil empire that destroyed the Earth eons ago. Yeah, that whole thing got real confusing real fast. Yeah. Like, have them be your constant threat. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have some infighting among the among the Grand Sazers because maybe they're, they're each fighting for different reasons. And it's, no, my reason for fighting is better than yours. Yeah. No, guys, we should all work together. That's, yeah. That sort of thing. So, you know, we can have some antagonism there, but, you know, keep, you know, they start out as enemies and they become frenemies and eventually they work together as a team to beat whatever, to to beat the, you know, defend off the evil empire or the bad guys. And when they start working together as a team around, say, episode Mm 30-ish, that's when they start sending bigger and bigger threats. And then in the last 10 episodes or so, it's like, all right, we're bringing the big guns out. And, that, and that's when you send in the giant robots. Yeah. <laughs> we, haven't, robot. we haven't needed these up until now, but here, yeah. we have the firepower to deal with this. Uh, okay, so here's how sort of what the whole like structure, at least tribe-wise, to go. Mm-hmm. So we got the Earth of Fire, at the, not Earth, uh, Wind and Fire at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, a whole bunch of infighting. Then Wind Tribe sort of leaves for a little bit. And then, like, the, the Earth Tribe comes in. Mm-hmm. Although we'll see one of them a couple episodes before the Wind Tribe sort of goes off. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, bigger things start happening. The Wind Tribe starts fighting some people. The Earth and the Fire One get along, you know, nine year immediately, which I think is fine. Mm-hmm. But you still have the Wind Tribe starting to beat the shit out of both of them. Mm-hmm. And then Water is last. Um, and, you know, we'll come in in those ten episodes, like, 30 and 40, mm-hmm. so the last 10 episodes can be all the big guns, uh, but the Water Tribe gets theirs first, right? which I think would actually end up being a good way to introduce that concept. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've, if only because of the fact that the Wind Tribe started off so antagonistic, that's where my problems really started. Mm-hmm. We're not going the pacifism route here. However... I do like... We're not going to put things on hold because, OMG, those two would be so cute together. (laughs) I do like the fact... Like, this is one of those things, like, one of really few things I did like. Um, I like the fact that the main bad guy is, like, Mm -hmm. a part of a larger battalion, but he's doing something illegal Mm -hmm. against the Earth. Right. And I'm saying, like, I like that concept because he's always trying to keep it hidden from the higher-ups because they'll arrest him Mm -hmm. near near to the end of the series. This way you, you know... If they want to go, we don't want to fight anymore. At least that way they won't have to. But it's like they understand that if we don't kill him, he coming back. And this way he can get arrested at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Because he's just so powerful. The way that they did it, he just sort of stumbles around after (sighs) after his plan gets found out. And then Logia takes him up. darn it. (laughs) Yeah. And then Logia takes him up to a whole trial. Which I sort of like. If they had somebody... Because I love Logia's suit, by the way. Mm. Like, that black and silver and everything. I just think that looked really good. It reminded me of Bio, uh, Bio Hunter Silva. Because mm. I'm saying, like, having him sort of Space Sheriff-esque mm-hmm. would be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. I would like to see the Professor and Mika's relationship be about exploring the past civilizations. Yes, because I, I would I would love it if they put some kind of an Indiana Jones twist on this, where we have the professor and Mika as his assistant, them going around and like uncovering the artifacts of the yeah. civilization from eons ago that the Empire destroyed. Because they, ha- <laughs> I forgot about this in the show proper. Bosquito, <laughs> I hate that name, but they all have like their pose and they end up saying their name, mm-hmm. and then Bosquito is like sort of learning. Mm-hmm. While he's multiplying and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they all do it in front of him. And he's like, bull, ski. And then he just starts beating them. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. This is stupid. And <laughs> what you're doing is stupid. However, my hands are rated E for everybody. So here they are. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, uh, we're not doing that whole communicator thing. Okay. That was stupid. Rand's sudden prevalence in the story didn't make any sense because there was no prior to... Like, there was no lead up mm. to that happening. It just sort of does. Yeah. And then they all think they're like um, descendants of Bosquito because they can use all their powers. Um, and I feel like Honestly, that's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. It just could have been done a lot better because they end up saying, like, the professor finds out that they don't share any of the same DNA or anything. Um, and then Rand gets told that later by the DNA. person who's who's automatically trying to kill her yeah. that she is a descendant, but everybody's DNA got tested. I'm sitting here like, don't walk back. Uh, so we're getting rid of, like, that whole last section. The less Rand has in common with the communicator thing, mm-hmm. the better. That was just really stupid. Ugh. No romantic subplot. I mean, you could have one among the grand uh, sizes. I think it was Velso and Naoto's character who plays like the main Earth one. Yeah. End up getting married at the end of it, but that relationship wasn't built up enough. They had like sort of maybe like one or two episodes, and I'm just like, this is now on Kyoryu's levels, and we don't need that anymore in our lives. Anything else jump out to you? Ah, uh, I'm trying to think, just to make sure. You know, there was one other thing because they did like the O Ranger thing where the helmets could change mm-hmm. on the main mech using like whatever the main character's like weapons were that was piloting it. Um, yeah, I, I think once we end up getting to that point where we can, we're going to actually start using the mechs to fight these things, Mm -hmm. there always needs to be somebody on the ground. So nobody's just standing around. Yeah. Or add another cockpit. Yeah. Or just (laughs) add some more people can get in there. One of the two. I I feel like with, uh, the mech fights, they got real stale real quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I feel like those ground fights, because there were like some things just like actual fight scenes, like the movements were quick. They were really well choreographed, but they got interspersed with let's use our weapon for final attack and yell out the name of final attack. And it just got boring. Mm -hmm. Like in the Sentai ones, edit edit your show better. (laughs) Yeah. Really just edit your show and don't use the same lighting. Uh, use the camera that this because this came out the same time around Ryuki yeah. and uh, Vice so use the Vice camera mm-hmm. where the lighting wasn't nearly that bad and the frame rate was lower that's more so that's more post and lighting in general not necessarily the camera but yeah it's all wrapped up in the same trash compactor so <laughs> it's just the filmmaking yeah the, the filmmaking as a whole definitely needs to be done better and I don't know. I haven't watched episode one of Just Razor yet, even though that came out just a couple months after Grand Sazer ended. So I'm really, really hoping that they switch the camera styles and the light and the post work and the editing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to be looking through the lens flare all over again. I remember there was one time where they were just like at an outside cafe, speaking of which, that was just like out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. That cafe had no stand or anything around to like go towards. Yeah. It was just a cafe and Logie was just out there drinking coffee and the next thing you know, we get a close-up shot of his face and it's just... Do you like light? There's some light here! Lucy! <laughs> just got so... Freaking Lumos. All on his face. <laughs> yeah. The, the, this show... Needs assistance. Mm. I feel like Velso should still be the first one to come into the side of them. Mm. Or maybe the last one. Because she is the most serious of that group. Either way, though. That turnaround just shouldn't have happened too quickly. I like like the evil la- uh, alien lady that they had at the beginning. I thought she was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. <sighs> How would you fix it? How would you fix Chosation Grand Sazer? That's the question I'm proposing to you, the audience. Unless Jacob has something else. Oh, I've said my piece. Okay. Ow. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) This show... Oh, this show takes out of me. 
Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Join us for Luke Pat. But thank you for watching, everyone. Yeah, don't forget to join us all the thing. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. <laughs>